the leg rolls? It's me, Dabney, the fucking alien. A lot of you have been asking to hear more about Theta Prime B. Theta Prime B is more advanced than Earth by 20 years. It'll give you a glimpse into your future. We have more disease and ecological catastrophes than you can imagine in your darkest dystopian nightmares. We have winds so strong that it picks up livestock. You never know when it's going to start raining cows. Large chunks of land have been swallowed up by the ocean, and there have been frequent Kevin Costner sightings. We have 48 variants of COVID-19, 27 variants of Ebola, and a collection of diseases released by the melting ice caps, collectively known as climate fever. We found that if you make a solution of silly putty, vodka, and snot, and inject that directly into your cock, it'll stop most diseases from entering your body. Trust me. For now, enjoy these videos from Undead Cow Studios and the Pope on Film. And I think Ted Cruz is a great guy. I think Social Security should be uh, privatized. You can't go to a supermarket without being accosted by a homeless guy. Democrats and liberals attack viciously. Everybody, it's me, Reverend Stephen. Today, we're going to be doing a little taste test. I live in Oklahoma, more specifically Oklahoma, which is where the first ever Sonic drive-in restaurant was uh, started. This this town is the birthplace of Sonic. There's one, two, three, four within driving distance. So they just recently announced, I say recently, a couple of months ago, they announced that they were working on a hard seltzer because everything has to have a hard seltzer now. Everything. They're gonna make the blood of Christ hard seltzer. Everything has to be a hard seltzer. And I've been looking and looking and looking for it because I, I feel that Sonic food is okay. It's fine. Cat, no! Fuck off! Stop getting on my goddamn computer! Sonic food is fine. It's okay. It's all right. But what keeps bringing me back to Sonic is two things. Cherry Limeade and Ocean Water. So today I found Sonic Ocean Water Hard Seltzer. And uh, I, I have... It's 5% alcohol per volume, 100 calories, and... One gig of sugar. <laughs> One gig of sugar. They they also sell it in a variety pack. That kind of smells like ocean water. They also sell it in a variety pack, and what I've heard is that two of the variety pack are great, and the others are shit. And so you're stuck with a bunch of uh, drinks that you won't ever want to drink. So I figured... Since o Ocean Water and Cherry Limeade are the absolute best drinks at Sonic, that it's a 50-50 chance that I'll like this. Anyway, let's give it a try. Down the hatch. You're just doing a little dance on the side? Oh, for the dog. Okay, yeah, you gotta do a dance for the dog. There's no good way to say this. This tastes like a water park. This tastes like sunscreen. This tastes like the water park inside of the California State Fairgrounds. The lazy river and the wave pool. And oh no, I've gotten a little bit of the water of the wave pool in my mouth. That's what this tastes like. But I don't know. It does taste like ocean water. It, I mean, whether or not I like the taste. Cat, I swear to fucking God. It 
does taste a lot like a water park. Uh, but I don't know. I think this is all right. Not a thumbs up. You get a thumb, a diagonal thumb, one diagonal thumb. It's not a thumbs up, and it's not a thumbs down. But it's not even a thumb sideways. It's 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 like a, it's one of these thumbs. I wouldn't go out and buy another twelve pack, but if my choices were a Budweiser. And this, I'm getting this. So, there you go. Sonic Hard Seltzer. These are hard to find. I've been looking for them for the longest freaking time, and I finally found one. So if you can, if you can find one, just get it. Just to try it. This is all right. I'd rather have this than a freaking Lacroix. I can tell you that. Rather have this than a than a what is that thing that all the freaking white people are drinking? White Claw. White Claw. I'd rather have this than a white claw. This has more taste to it. Wow. I look good right now. Hey. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, so that's my taste test. Sonic, hard seltzer, ocean water. It's all right. It's all right. Thanks for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe. See you later. On the death of John McCain, Lindsey Graham was forced to roam the halls of Congress in search of another set of balls to lick. Luckily, Trump's nutsack was within sniffing distance. No matter how many times Trump hurled insults at Lindsey Graham's best dead friend, Lindsey sucked up that scrotum like Thursday's soup. Oh, you're the best golfer I've ever seen, Mr. Trump. Ooh, you bring a kind of magic to the Republican Party, Mr. Trump. Lindsey Graham. What a fucking beta cup. Check out this video by our friend Tim Caldwell. In the village of Santo Palo, there is celebration. We bake mighty fine pastries this week! Yes indeed, many fine cakes and cookies! It will bring lots of money to the village! In fact, I have an announcement to make! We have finally made enough money that we can buy every whisk! Oh. And give Mama Rosa a rest! Oh, thank you! Thank you! Now, I can die! I'm happy! <laughs> Let the celebrations continue! Not so fast. Who are you? <sighs> I am Sean Connery. I have come for your gold. Any objections? No! 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 And one prostitute. But, uh, we have no gold. Uh, just the ingredients to make our pastries. You are a village of bakers? Then I will take your ingredients. Ocho Cinco will stop you. I am afraid of no man whose name has four syllables. I will take your supplies. But first, those pancakes you made this morning weren't fluffy enough, woman. take these ingredients from these people. I do. Then I shall stop you. Wrap it up, man. Melrose is on at nine. Please.
Do you think he's dead? I don't know. Is he breathing? Let's take his wallet. <gasps> Who did this to me? It was that gringo, Sir Ocho. You shot me? I came here to defend this village against evil and you shot me? This will not go unpunished. I am Ocho Cinco and I... You shot me again. Who do you think you are? Don't you know guns are... Please stop shooting me. It's okay. I'm out of bullets anyway. Good. Now we will fight like men. No. I'm not used to hitting men. I will take my leave of you and your crappy village. But mark my words, Ocho. I'll be back. I won. Oh, you have saved us! Oh, you have made our village safe again! Thank you, Ocho! I will always protect this village against the gringos and the vampire wizards. There are lots of things a woman does not need, but every woman needs a man! I'll go find you one. The village is safe thanks to Ocho Cinco. Until next week, what the fuck is this? Hey! 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 Thirteen. Maybe more. 
He's looking for only one thing. Blood. Human victims for human blood. Experiment in horror to satisfy a desperate need never before known. A need that was not of this earth. From outer space he came to destroy the people of this planet, leaving in his path of doom a trail of terror. He's going to kill me! Stay there, I'm on my way. I can't stay! I... Storytime with Mei Lin, a one-of-a-kind, hyperactive and interactive blend of adult stand-up comedy and children's storytime because you're never too old for a good story. Mei Lin is going on tour in 2024 and after much deliberation, they have chosen the following wildly original name for their tour, Storytime with Mei Lin on tour, a one former man show. Brought to you in part by Spite. Don't miss your chance to see her on tour before Republicans ban her, just like they're busy banning all history books and, for that matter, books books. For more information on Mei Lin, like, I don't know, try Google maybe, or Bing if you're a weirdo. Hey, is Ask Jeeves still a thing? Probably not. Oh well. Story time with Mei Lin. And we're back with more of the Pope on film. Funny, I don't know if I have ever said this out loud on the podcast, but I love Ocho Cinco. Yeah? I fucking love it. Good. So much, and he's got the El Santo mask on. I just, I, I, I really love it. Cool. I really I do. I do. That's off that to Tim Caldwell. Time. Huh? I think that is the first time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Hats off to uh, to fucking Tim Caldwell because I love that. I love that. I love Tim, the fact that Tim he's protecting rules. a little village and it's just like their backyard or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, the vampire wizards. Love it. I think it's super funny and cute. Um, it's time, buddy. It's time. It's time. Oh, yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here on the Pope on Film podcast to shake, rattle, and or roll our way into the second half of our big shoe. And it is said second half, wherein we finally, it eventually get around to discussing our all-new 
low fat, zero calorie, and now in limited edition Jar Jar Binks packaging. Movie of the week. And this week we continue our very cheap summer of Roger Corman movies with yet another very cheap double feature. Not of this earth and rock all night. Yes. Dude, I'm I'm dancing. Oh man, this groovy beat really swings. You dig, Daddy? Now, before we mention anything about these movies, I'm going to stop your discussion right here, Bunny. Before we jump headfirst into these two, I guess we can call them movies, I would like, if I may, to shine a big old spotlight on uh, one performer in these films who deserves to get way more recognition, way more recognition, Actress and famous Hollywood landmark Beverly Garland. Yes, it's a big deal <coughs> that she is the uh, star of Not of This Earth and number and one many Corman films. And yes, uh, number one, she's freaking beautiful. Um, She's the female lead in our first movie, Not of This Earth, and for no reason other than I was bored and probably high, I looked her up, and boy howdy, this woman's story is so freaking awesome. So Beverly Garland, she's an actress who, according to IMDb, I believe it's pronounced, I'm the, I'm Dave's <coughs> boobs. I am Dave's boobs. That's what that stands for. I made Dave's butt. That's what it is. I am DB. I made Dave's butt. Um, Beverly Garland got her start, quote, acting in a small theater in Glendale, Arizona, unquote. And I'm pretty sure I know that theater. There's only one small theater that does community theater in the entirety of Glendale, Arizona. I'm pretty sure it's still there. I must have seen like 20 different fucking shows there. But I, I have been there. So in the 50s, sometime I believe after this movie, Beverly Garland starred to, in her own TV show, uh, it, like a cop procedural. Really? Half hour show. Yeah, and this, I haven't even gotten to the crazy part yet. That makes her the first ever female cop on television. And the first female to star in her own show on TV. That's a oh, big ass I don't deal. Know about that. That's what that's what I am Dave I made Dave's butt say. So that show was on before I Love Lucy. Hold on. Beverly Garland, the Garland biography. Um, the Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters inducted her into its Hall of Fame. Mrs. Garland has two very significant. Oh no! It it was the same year as this. Okay. Um, Miss Garland has two very significant historical television firsts. She was television's first police woman as the star of 1957's Decoy. Oh, okay. And more importantly, the show gave her the honor of becoming the first actress to star in a television dramatic series. Okay. All right. There you go. Yeah. So, um, so that's pretty cool, but that's not even... It, cool as this next factoid. Okay, so she got her first big break. Um, and she had a supporting part in DOA, and then it, it. The crazy thing is, is that she had a long run on the show My Three Sons, and on the TV show The Guardian, and on she had a reoccurring spot in Seventh Heaven. And she had a long run on Scarecrow and Mrs. King. Really? 
Yeah. So, okay. Her first husband was the actor Richard Garland. And they got married. And eventually they got divorced. And she went on to marry another person. A land developer, uh, entrepreneur, businessman, whose name, get this, this this seems like a bad guy who's trying to shut down the rec center in a movie, yeah. but Beverly Garland's second husband was Fillmore Crank. Oh. I can see his mustache a-twirl it. You know? Yeah. Man, that's such a great name. Fillmore Crank, but thankfully Beverly Garland kept the name Garland. She didn't want to change her name to Beverly Crank. We we would have to cast that with Kelsey Grammer. Totally. Yeah. Beverly Crank is I'm pretty sure is a porn actress, or could be. Yeah. A porn actress. But uh, her second husband, Fillmore Crank, that sounds so fake. Um, he was working on a big high class hotel in LA and he he wanted it to be the nicest and the classiest and the prettiest hotel legend has it and so he named the hotel after the most beautiful thing he knew so he opened two high class five star hotels called the Beverly Garland Hotel Okay. And they opened up and they stayed open up. Um, a big time luxury hotel. There were two of them. And then when the hubby died, she ran the hotel herself and her family. And in the if you're ever in the East Coast, you can still spend the night there. But nowadays it's known simply as slight pause for dramatic effect. The Garland Hotel. Okay. But it's still there. It's it's a piece of history. That's I find that fascinating. Yeah. That Beverly Garland had a hotel named after. Oh yeah, what was it called? The Beverly Garland Hotel. Oh wow, going the direct route, are we? <laughs> All right then. So the first film is not of this earth. And I said this in the beginning of the podcast. I will say it again. The bad guy in this is not a vampire, and that pisses me off. He, he's so bad. He's not. Not only is he not a vampire, he 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 sucks with worldwide domination. You yes. know, he's got a he's got a few issues going on here. I think personally. Can you hit us with the plot of this, Bunny? Yeah, not really. Uh, yeah, and even worse so for the next movie. Uh, oh yeah. Well, there's an alien. Uh, he is in this small town, uh, trying to take it over because that is his plan for world domination. Uh, his planet is out of blood, which brings up a whole. Yes. Other problem going on here. Uh, and and some clever town, townspeople thwart him. That's about it. Bunny, you missed the most important part, which is that Devana must endure! Yes. That is, of course, the most important part of the movie. This is a 1957 indie sci-fi flick may, uh, directed and produced by our man R.C. Cola. Hey, Bunny, how about uh, after this episode, uh, you, you and I hot foot it in your hot rod and we'll <laughs> swing up to Lover's Lake? <laughs> how about it, daddy Uh... How about we ball it up in Albuquerque like <laughs> yeah. Ed Wood said in Plan Night from Outer Space? Um, I'm, I'm just going to say it. Uh, society went downhill when we got rid of all of our makeout points in Love for Slates. Yes. Going to come out and say it. 
that's not really a thing anymore. And uh, also, boom, my dick radar has been activated. <laughs> I also kind of like dick watch activate. 22 minutes in, our man, the king of the character actors, yep. Mr. Dick M Miller, the legend himself, appears as a vacuum cleaner salesman. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, buddy. We got us some dick here. Yeah, we definitely do. We got us a decent-sized dick, but I wasn't expecting the amount of dick we got in the second movie. I wasn't prepared for that. That's a lot of dick we got there in yeah. the second half. It's a good dick double feature. But and you know, you know, that was definitely Walter Paisley. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, now the, Dick Miller's character in the second film, Rock All Night, that is absolutely not no. Walter Paisley. That was an actual badass guy who could look people in the eye. Um... Dick Miller, I love this man so much. He is amazing. In it, I looked up the Wikipedia, the Wikipedia for this film, not of this earth. And it, in the plot synopsis, it labeled Dick Miller as a sleazy door to door salesman. I don't know where you're getting sleazy. Yeah. You're just trying to sell, what, vacuum cleaners. Uh-huh. There's nothing slimy about them. Every salesperson is slimy. Yeah. It Not comes with deal. the business. Yeah. That upset me. So then he dies, and I was a bit upset about that. The thing that I find interesting is that this quote-unquote vampire that's not a vampire, it's an alien. He kills people by taking off his sunglasses and giving him a Scott Summers. But without okay. the laser beam, as far as I can tell, that's what he's doing. Like, he has eye power? Yeah. The fuck does that mean? How... Why I'm so confused. So the, the, the plot... planet the planet irradiated itself so now like they don't have blood. Okay. So what, what the mean? fuck is he going to do? Beam it back a pint at a time? Cause that's um, what the plan here was. UPS. It's the fastest ship in the shipping business. Well, no, I, I, I think the, the, the big box with the human head on top worked pretty efficiently for beaming it back to his planet. You know, but still, the whole planet has to fight over to that one pint until you can get another one. Oh, okay, Bunny, it's killing me that I... the population of this planet? How far are it, we subdividing this one pint? It kills me that I don't remember the name of this, but what was the thing that they used to talk with in this island Earth? Oh, the... Uh, it's on the, the tip of my tongue. The in Yeah, dude's got an interocitor. Yeah. Period. He's got an interocitor, which can also beam people, I yeah. guess. Which is a big yeah. black empty space with a guy's head at the top. Yeah, basically. It, 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 call me crazy, Bunny. I know you'll probably not agree with this, but um, I found the plot of this to be slightly convoluted. Yes. Yet Shocker, still, I, I know. enjoyed it. I enjoyed this movie. <laughs> it was it's fun. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, no, who it was... the hell... Is this alien after all? I mean, yeah, he's got the mind powers, but like, he failed in his attempt to take over and conquer a neighborhood. A neighborhood, like, like, 
he's Voldemort level bad. Yeah. At his job. The thing that kills me is that um this was an alien, a monster who killed people and stole the blood from their dead bodies. He tried to conquer Earth and now he's dead. Let's give him a proper burial and a headstone? Yeah. Why? No one knew who he was. You did not need to bury him. Yeah, and that's... also, whatever is in that casket is is not him because the government definitely has his corpse. Yeah. I mean, because like, he, he, you're wasting a great opportunity to find out what an alien tastes like. Ooh, space chicken. You know, I mean, it's they're chicken. aliens, it's so it's space. not its not cannibalism. Nope. Well, yeah, it would be cannibalism, because cannibalism is eating humans. Very interesting. So You really so opened up this, my mind there. So we could kind of turn this around to be like, okay, so uh, you need blood, do you? All right. Come, yeah. Come get it. <laughs> so this movie was a big time early hit for Roger Corman. Technically, it ran as the second half of a double feature along with uh, R.C. Cola's film Attack of the Crab Monsters. Yeah which we won't be doing this summer specifically because the bad guys are these paper mache crabs with Marty Feldman eyes. Yeah. Or Buscemi eyes, whichever one you'd prefer. Yeah, yeah, I think Buscemi eyes would be more acceptable now. People, yeah. people are forgetting yeah, it was, Marty Feldman. <clears throat> yeah, paper mache giant crabs with Buscemi eyes. I always hated the look of the crabs from Attack of the Crab Monster. But this was a huge hit that gave him the money to keep making schlock. It was remade in 1988, starring Tracy Lords. Yeah. Then it was remade again in the 90s, but I have no information about that. I thought this movie was short and dumb and fun. Yeah. It was nice. I, I was rooting for the former criminal. Yeah. That's the guy I was rooting for. He almost made it to the end. I was like, oh my God, Dick Miller's here. Oh shit, he's going to die. And yeah. then he just died like that. And I'm like, damn it. But I want Dick so bad. But then <laughs> we got to our second film, Rock All Night. Holy shit, there's a lot of Dick in this. That was a lot of Dick. And look, funny, can I say something on the podcast without you? immediately getting all judgy with me. Okay. You know, because remember that I'm a trans woman, okay? And I'm a Hispanic trans woman. Okay. I'm not just a unicorn. I'm a unicorn made of snowflakes that okay. landed in downtown Phoenix in August. So just don't attack and get all judgy. I'm just going to come out and say it. This movie was made in 1957. I did the math. Dick Miller is 29 years old in this film. And I'm not saying that Dick Miller can get a piece of this. I'm saying badass 29-year-old Dick Miller can do whatever he wants with all of this. <laughs> Gesturing to all of me. Like, Walter Paisley, I don't find attractive, but holy shit. Badass, angry, going to beat up the professor from Gilligan's Island, Dick Miller, he can take me out for a nice night. Yeah. I won't say no to him. Very handsome. But hey, Hepcat, this movie really swings. It's a gasser, daddy -o. I'm hep to Dick Miller's jive slang. It's the end. They said that at some point in time in the film. It's the end. 
Dick Miller technically has top billing, but I think Dick Miller has top billing because people want this to be a rock and roll film and not a chick film. Yeah. Because the chick, I feel like the woman's the star of this film. Oh, and I looked her up. Um, Julie, the female lead, her biggest role was as Joey Bishop's wife in his four-season sitcom. Yeah. And then later she was in Falcon's Crest. Uh-oh. And that's a name you weren't expecting to remember today, but you're welcome. Uh, so, uh, so our boy Dick Miller has some pretty top billing in this swinging film that he does. With the platters! Yes. The fucking platters, bunny! I, is it, the reason why I picked this is because it's like, okay, here's this lady singing, and then here's the blockbusters, okay, and here's the platters. Hold on a second. I fucking know them. Yeah. This must have been very early in their career to for them to be in a <laughs> Roger Corman film. Okay, so I looked them up. They had an astounding 40 hits charting hit songs between 1955 and 1967 including four number one hits they are in the rock and roll hall of fame for shit's sake and you know them everybody knows them they sang only you yes can make your butt not itch and they also sang, Smoke Gets In Your Eyes. They sing that. And they also sing, I only have eyes for you. They had an eyes face, <coughs> maybe. And then they sang, oh, this is the one that, of theirs that I really like. Oh, 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 yes, I'm the great pretender. Which uh, Julie sings in the movie. Yeah. And then um, uh, they, they sang... Um, you loaded 15 tons. What do you get? They sang that, too. Yeah. They were a big-ass deal. They were a huge band. They were a big deal in the music world. And in true Roger Corman fashion, they're in the first nine minutes and no more. Yep. If I was a hip swinging cat in the 1950s and I went to this movie to see the platter, I'd be fucking pissed. Yeah. Like, dang. They're in the first nine minutes. They're singing nothing I've heard of. I did find the theme song but, Rock All Night by the Blockbusters on Spotify and I've been listening to it. But see, Roger Corman knew that, but he was just like, <laughs> already got your money. Originally, the platters were also going to be the blockbusters, and they were going to be th throughout the film. But then uh, this whole thing came about because, like, whatever the studio is just said, hey, the platters want to be in a film. We can put them in one film. Anybody got an idea? And Roger Corman said, I've got an idea. So he got them. But then when it came time, they got this big script where the the platters were a major part of the plot. But then uh, the platters being the platters are like, OK, you've got us for one day. And so Roger Corman's like, shit. We need to rewrite this entire script. And then that's what happened. And I think that that's why. In the beginning, they're in the rich ass place. And then they go to the actual movie. Yeah. Which all happens well, in a shack. You know what pisses me off? Quentin Tarantino's like, I'm using the best cameras, the most amazing cameras for this incredible, high-definition, one-of-a-kind experience, The Hateful Eight. It is a massive epic. Yeah, right. Most of the movie's in a shack. Yeah. That pisses me off. Well, what were you going to say? 
so okay so so it seemed to me that this was really a, a bunch of smaller stories of people we didn't care about it and it seemed, seemed like, like it... they would go to the the cool nightclub and watch the platters but then after their two drink minimum they'd go up to the street to the this shitty little dive bar to get their real drink on. Yeah. Yeah, but that yeah, that's basically what the original movie was going to be about. But when they found out that they only had them for like this amount of time. Yeah. Roger Corman said, "Shit, okay, then we need a second fan." Cuz we will have the platters for this long and then they filmed two songs and then okay, well, we can't do any more. So but you can see the movie yeah. that the platters would have been in. And, and it was pretty much, everybody's story was pretty much being presided over by bartender Joe Flaherty. Yeah. Who was definitely going home that night with that other guy. Absolutely. No 100%. The bartender is fucking the journalist. Yeah. Period. Ten minute warning. Ten minute warning. I beat you. Uh, so, um, yes. Uh, Dick Miller was twenty nine when he made this, and twenty nine year old Dick Miller can get himself some of this. Um, I thought Dick Miller was great. Oh, uh, the bartender. His name was Joe Exposition. Yeah. And it's like, hey, what can I get you, journalist? How are things in the paper? Oh, look. Here's that famous boxer. Yeah. And it's like basically that was his entire job. Was just explaining to everyone what was going on. Dick Miller was great. I liked the Hepcat lingo that was swinging. I wasn't expecting to see Barbara Morris in this. See who? She's the bar her her name isn't Barbara Morris because she spells Barbara <sighs> B A R B. O-U-R-A? And that pisses me the fuck off. So it's not Barbara, it's Barbara. She was the love interest from A Bucket of Blood. She was the hero in The Wasp Woman. Okay. And she was the boxer's uh, wife in this. It was nice to see her. I have had a crush on her since I first saw A Bucket of Blood. Yeah. Freaking love her. Um, I, I found it to be a bit confusing because yeah, it's like, it, it's like a bunch of interconnected stories done badly. It's like Quinn Tarantino saw this and said, what if I made this film, but better? And then he made Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Cause this feels just like a pulpy, like five different random characters that have just been put together and one of them's the fucking professor from Gilligan's Island yes. but he's made a gun out of coconuts. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so, so like there's no real plot plot as far as I understand and nope. everybody's smaller little subplot was just too boring or trite to remember or yeah. keep track of. Dick Miller was cool. Then the professor tried to rob the place. Yeah. It's kind of what it comes down to. Yeah. And that's it. But at the end, Dick Miller not <laughs> only lives, but he gets the girl. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that. I don't like the fact that the professor, that his character name was... <clears throat> Jigger with a J. Jigger. I didn't like that. Yeah. They kept saying the J word way too much and it made yeah. me uncomfortable. Because I'm an ally. But it was nice seeing the professor. I, I wasn't expecting to watch a Roger Corman teeny bopper rock and roll movie and end up seeing Dick Miller Beat the shit out of a Gilligan's Island cast. Yeah. Wasn't expecting that. 
in my mind, the singer Lady Julie married the short guy. A lot of short shaming in this film. And they get married. They, they meet. They fall in love. They get married. And now they're the old couple from Gremlins. Oh. That eventually, uh, what, Lucy, Linda, uh, Julie dyed her hair black, curled it. And now that's how they're both living in whatever Bedford Falls um, replica Gremlins was set in. But once, just once, wouldn't you like to see Gilligan get the shit beat out of him? Fuck yes. Fuck yes. Yeah. I would absolutely love that. So, okay. So that's all I've got for this week's film. I will say, I I think I said this earlier, I did find the theme song to Rock All Night by the Blockbuster on Spotify. And I've been listening to it fairly regularly. It really swings. Yeah. It's the living end, daddy O. <laughs> okay. So that's all I've got this week. I thought that next week we could do the big two of Bucket of Blood and Little Shop of Horrors. But then, no. Um, I decided to go a little bit farther. So next week, we're doing the Wasp Woman, which I believe we have done before, but I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. But our second feature next week, really excited about this, The Pit and the Pendulum, our oh, first dear. color film and our first Edgar Allan Poe, which I think everyone agrees are like the only real good movies that Roger Corman made. There are some others. Oh, or, yeah. or ones that aren't so bad. Yeah, but but the Poe ones are sort of universally beloved. Yeah. And Vincent Price. Oh, ah, classic Vincent Price. So I'm excited about that. The Wasp Woman is, of course, free everywhere, and The Pit and the Pendulum. I'm working on it. Okay. Give me a few hours and it'll all be straightened out. But that's next week. Uh, this week, though, oh man. Uh, Dick Watch, Ocho Cinco, uh, Getting High with a House Plant, Star Crash. Fuck that movie. Fuck that movie. I hate that fucking movie. So fucking much. Maybe that'll be the last movie we see. Oh, can you imagine a double feature? Star Crash and the Fantastic Four. Yeah. I like his Fantastic Four. Yeah. Uh, not the best. I have no problem with it. But not yeah. bad. Well, no, no. I've seen the other Fantastic It is the best. I've seen the other Fantastic Fours. Oh, well, I meant out of movies. If you're talking about out of Fantastic Four movies... Yeah. <sighs> this one doesn't have uh, Jessica uh, Alba... Uh, let me rewatch it and I'll let watching you Watching know. white... Being white face. Yeah. But looking back at this episode, I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast there, buddy. This has been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I, I felt the same way, but I didn't want to sort of step on your toes because I feel that that's like a you thing. And I didn't want to. Anyway, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am May Lynn, and on behalf of Natasha and Q and everybody else, in the Pope on Film Studios here in beautiful, sunny Kent, Ohio. I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And the kids aren't here, which is great. <laughs>
I think I'm going to take a nap after this. Hugh, do you want to cuddle with me? Oh, wow. Okay. I thought all 18-year-olds like cuddling with their trans-Hispanic moms. It's okay, mijo. Trying to embrace my Spanish roots by throwing in a few little bits of Spanish. Isn't that right, pinche pendejo? You probably do speak more Spanish on a daily basis than I do, but I'm working on it, okay? Cool your enchiladas, Q. Q's name in Spanish is... ¿Qué? So, there you go. Uh... Do, 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 do. I'm not going to get cut off this time. Pretty excited. Do, 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 do. Oh, Bunny, I forgot to tell you. Did you cut already? No. Okay. I discovered the secret of the, I discovered the meaning of life. I got really high like a week and a half ago. And I started watching this like meditation video. And so that's when it hit me. The entirety of the meaning of life. It's very exciting. So I wrote it down and I've got it right here. You are going to, this is going to blow your mind. It's going to change society. Okay. So, 